<clears throat> Welcome back. Just put a layer of base thread onto the hook. Uh, this is a Uni AO hot orange. And I'm going to be tying up some wires for rainbow truck. All I'm doing is running this up. This is a white corded UV swaddle flitz. That's open. Hello, if we just joined.
Common are usually done with a black wing, but I'm going to try this one with a white. So a crystal UV body. I'm going to try and get a good head on it. Do as you can do this. I have a bulk it up with. That's now got a hot, hot spot. That's one on. So when I go to what the, the Marabu pulsates. So it's comes in and out. So got that one. I say I never usually see them with a a white wing, it's usually a black. Um head. I'm still sticking with the, the UV hot orange. Um, let's look. Um, on chat, on video. Boxes down. Drop a hello. Say hi. Um, what I'm going to try and do now is tie a nomad. I do have a hot, well, you know, it's nearly a hot green as such, but you know, a hot orange. You do also have a fluorescent green. Um, swap over the, the bobbin holders. See. Makes any difference. Last time I tried this, this stuff just broke on me. Don't know why. I wasn't keen on that idea. First time lucky there. Hmm. No. I believe there's two ways of time is flying. One you put your thread, your, your cone-shaped thread at the, the head of the fly. I am mainly trying to do that first, so it saves it, the, the gold head coming towards the eye of the hook. So, here goes something. 
quite a few off camera. So what you're doing is just basically above on the cone shape. This fly was actually invented for uh, catching wet brownies. No, right, a brown trout fly, but it's kind of been adapted to, um, to actually fishing for rainbows. But yeah, this is just a basic cone shape. Basically stays there. Now for the other, this is the tricky part now. I believe right, that sits like so. Now you get a bark collar thread. I'm going. Basically, box standard block. And one off. Hi, Michael. See if I can try and do this behind my black shirt so you can see no, the t-shirt I'm wearing. Um, can you hear me okay, Michael? Just asking. Now, what I'm going to do is bulk up this end of this gold head. So, it'll be like a cone shape either end, but I want to try and bulk this end up at the time at the moment without letting that bead slip. I will think my thread's not, my snap, thread's not. Accidents do happen. Luckily, this is only the, the beginning, so thankfully, I can cover up this mistake. Mistakes happen. As Bob Ross once said to me, he says, you don't make mistakes, you make happy accidents. Hmm. I must have been on something.
must be a problem with this bulb and holder. Shouldn't be snapping like that. Hi Simon. That's good, Michael. Um, I'm hoping to try and get out fishing this weekend. Um, come in. I've got a league to do at the local fishery I go to. Um, and then if I get my four fish, I'm going to take them to the sea. Free bait, free fishing. I can't. I'm not complaining about that part. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm just basically trying to tie up some. Uh, well, show you guys that have been more into sea fishing. I mean, I know it's potluck fishing. If I was to go rainbow trout fishing, fair enough. I know what I'm going for. But, see, I, I can understand where sea fishing comes from. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a hit or a miss. I mean, it really is a hit or a miss to see what you catch. I suppose it's like a course version too. I mean, you go say, oh, I want to catch a carp. And then you end up catching a tench. I mean, you're not going to complain, but you'll complain that you didn't catch a carp. I complain when it comes to general fishing. Why there's no fish there to catch when the place has got fish in it. So, yeah. Us anglers are never happy. Never happy. Didn't have it last night. I got it here. Now, take a generous pinch of marabou. Um, <laughs> it's nearly a, a miss or a blank for me. Well, Simon, I can safely say it's the same where I go. Place fish is completely different at night than it does during the day. Don't ask me why that is. I still trying to find that out. I think everybody's in the same boat, actually. So what I'm doing is now putting the marabou as a tail. So when that goes along the water, that's pulsating. So. To show you on bigger scale, um, the white or well, if I do black, you'll see black. See how it pulsates. That's what it's like to do in the water. So now I should have, should have that's uh, unreal of all the things to look for. Let's see, do I land in this? No. Land up in top. Anyway, guys, sorry. Um, do, do, do. Let's see, straddles. Huh. Okay, this might be. Search mission. I'm done it last night. She's on crisps, anybody? <laughs> hmm, that's weird. 
I've lost the fruit. Might be a dark green olive fruit. And I've lost it. It was sitting with everything else, but now it's kind of eluded me. Yeah, the whole thing caboodles eluded me. Ah, not to worry. Found it. Me to gets me out of the house into the fresh air. Well, that's that was my main argument during the last three years. I'm not going to mention this name because to me it was just a whole heap of lies. Um, but that was my opinion. I mean, I don't understand why fisheries had to shut up shop when it was actually good for a person's mental health. Don't get me started on politics, trust me. That would be a very bad idea. This time it is to catch something on a popper. Don't care what it is as long as it's not weed. Um, Simon, question for you. If, since you're asking about popper fishing, do you use a fly rod? If so, I do have something that can represent a popper. Well, in a roundabout way. Um, because apparently if you go popper fishing for, uh, for a, a bass, is it? Um, bass love them. Now, there's a fly called a popper. Um, there's actually a very interesting gentleman that uh, well, basically, th from the whole angling community, should um, should know him, Chris Ogborn. He was actually in England, and I think he's capped the England team, well, international England team, twice, three times. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. Um, and he goes to Cornwall to basically fly fish for bass. Yeah. Um, now, I've got one to hand. See if you can see that. That there is a booby. You can tell by the, the two eyes on it, right? This is actually a woofter booby. But instead of having the eyes set like that, what you do is you get, um, in fact, uh, what I'll do is I'll tie one. I'll show you. Because I do have a uh, foam in front of me. A couple of these. Now, trim this away. Now, a drop of varnish, doesn't matter where, as long as it's on. This was meant to be a brown trout fly, as I said. This is called a Nomad, and it is amazing. Usually, they're like double the length of this. So this size that I've just tied up, you actually get them bigger than this, a lot bigger. So, um, get that on my, that's my little fancy collection so far. I didn't tie this, but Bass would go for that, 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 that there, this gold thing, is a Black and, uh, black and gold humongous. You get black and silvers, white and silvers, 
but um, it's a fry imitation. So I don't suppose that, I mean, a bass would go to that. Um, but um, I'm bass fishing. This might just be the hook for it. Big hook. I don't ask me what type this is. I don't know. Um, well, since you're on about catching uh, fish, Michael, on flies, we've got a pack of buzzles here. Since you brought up the subject, where is it? No. I might have to take this hook out of the face so you can see this a bit better. I'll try. You've got a white body with an orange head. So basically, that there is a maggot. Um, hi, Darren. That there is a maggot replica, an imitation. So the trigger point would be where, the, where you see the orange, that's its trigger point. So the, a fish can't miss that, it will see it. So even if you were to take this to a fishery, so you're saying, oh, I'm going to go um, carp fishing or whatever. Um, You'll definitely be, you'll definitely see that. Um, I've got a multitude of buzzers here. But yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing that you're trying to imitate for catching um, horse fish. I mean, this is a different kind, but on the same principle. You'll have one that's got like a an or uh, well a red head with the white body. So um I mean all the buzzers that are actually in this packet will work. Um usually they've got black, so black and orange, black and green. Um the cheeks are usually an orange colour. But like I say, since I've got this, uh, since I've got this um, big almighty hook in the vice, mm -hmm. this stuff. No. Straighten that out. I've got silver as well. We're just holding the card. And I've also got gold. I no. Right, here we go. Black. I even got yellow. Well, chartreuse. Blue or flash. And I've also got um da da da. It's like a bronze chocolate brown. Um, but the main thing is the head, right? Now, usually if you're pop fishing, the way I've seen it is, no, 
was going to hit into it, so. Just got back and heading out again at 4.45 in the evening. I'm okay, I'm okay just waiting. Oh, okay. Well, you guys should enjoy it. really an eye as such but Concave or concave? Was it concave or convert? Was it converse? I can't mind. Anyway, I must get a layer of thread down so I'm trying to tie this popper in. Doesn't matter what it is, thread wise, I mean, let's say I've got the hot orange in front of me anyway, so I'll just keep going with that. I mean, let's say this is just going to be like a, a base layer. Um, pretty chunky things, a popper head, so. Square. Square that off. That's. Got this tape up, so that should theoretically sit like so. Okay, we'll go down the bottom and fly first. Yeah, this. Right.
Boom. Um, right. Let's see. That's a good thing. Um, night shifts are the worst. So you want to try and turn night in the day and then back into normality again, it's, so it's hard. It really is hard. It's a pain. You'd be like, oh, we don't night shift are we? Oh, okay. Right, so. Good, however, And give it a bit of a wing. I won't think you need much of this stuff, but Something like that, and then just I mean, I know there's different people out there that probably do it different from me, but if I was to sit with a seat, I'd probably catch a fish with it. 
Um, so you've got the silver underneath and the UV body. I think, I possibly might be wrong to say this, but I think saltwater uh, species official probably got a better sense of a um, of a UV. They can probably see UV better than than we can. Um, let's see. I don't read the comment. Um, Advice, um, yeah, you guys can make a judge on that if that would be ideal for bass or not. Can I say, I, I have tied up a few hooks for a few macro flies, if you want to call them them. Um, but yeah. That would be the closest I would get to a popper, um, Simon. Depends on what you're tying, but I've tried to shape the cone, which is this. Um, but yeah, when the water hits that, that'll pop through the surface. So, no, honestly, you could, um, what's the other one I have got? Um, yeah, the one box is there. Give me a minute. Um... These I did a while ago. In fact, it must have been last, some point last year. But I've got a very small hook. Um, so I can put them on, on a trace for macro feathers. Um, same again. But done with um, done with yellow. Um, they ain't the only size size eight hooks, but they're from a packet, and we've got this one. So, I mean, the length of that doesn't really matter. Um, it's still the same thing. Um, I'm gonna save another yellow one. That's without any sparkle in it. I did a, a pure orange one. Um, 
it was with just two bits of hackle. Um, we've got pure white one. Okay, it's got a bit of a got any mark on the side of it, but that won't a fish won't care about that. Um, that's one marabou. Um, we've got two tonal, which is the same size of hook again. They're tiny. They must be like a, a standard size eight. I don't know what um, what make they are, but yeah, marabou and crystal flash, and then. This is my favourite one. I mean, not a big hook there I can put to use, which in fact I will do. Just do it just now. Um, I managed to cone off behind the head, so it was like a tapered. So this is the tail. I managed to, to basically cone it back to some extent. But yeah, that's, that's another one for the, the mackerel. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Simon. Um, let's see. When you look at a, a, a mackerel, what do you call it? A mackerel string? Or is it a mackerel rig? Um, for the life of me, I cannot remember what it's called. I think it's a macro string. Uh, so I'm just going back there. Thank you, Michael. Um, this is how quick you can try and do a macro feather if you want to fly fish for them. Um, I'm not going to bother changing the threads. And I'm not going to cover the whole, the whole hook either. All I'm doing is just basically building up a cone shape. Sorry about the racket outside, guys. A guy can't drive a van properly. I think the gearbox is broken. Or he certainly doesn't know how to change a gear. Just try to burn the clutch out. Idiot. That's me basically building up a cone shape. Now I will get rainbow stuff. Now it's completely up to the individual how long you want this. So you could have that much if you actually want to try and um this is down next to Um, Michael, I'm 31. <laughs> so what does that say for me? And I started fishing when I was three years old, so I'm um, cut that there. That to me seems the perfect. What are you trying to say? 
always said that I've been brought up with people who are a lot older than me. Um, I mean, my favourite generation is... Well, I think I was born in the wrong, the wrong era, as people would say. I should have been born in the 50s. Then we had the swing in 60s. The free state. Everything was as it should be. Free. I would have seen Jimi Hendrix. Instead of just reading about him and watching him on YouTube. I would have actually seen him in, the, in all his glory. So, yeah, I prefer that kind of era, and I prefer that kind of music. Some of the stuff I'm going to put it backwards. It would be a lot easier for me to grab onto it. Darling, do you just hear a door slam or is that a gunshot? No, that just happened like now. I did. I'm hoping slam. Don't panic, people. I, I, <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> Um, sure. They were girls in their twenties walking around with belts on for skirts, dancing to rave music. Ah, the good old days, disco stuff. No, I kind of grew out of that. I was—I remember being at my very first school disco. And for where I actually stay in Brecon, we had the best nightclub in the whole of Scotland. Um, and it was actually well renowned for even from people down south. We had coach loads coming up here. Um, the place was called Flix back in the, the heyday of when. Um, might be showing before my time, but there used to be a, well, everybody knows Rick Water, uh, Rick Waterman, Peter Waterman, Michaela Strachan, two news presenters, well, not news presenters, two TV presenters, Ross, especially Michaela. She was a, a TV presenter. Well, when we had Flex, that's what they were called, Hitman and Her. Yep, it came here. We were the only nightclub for, well, mainly all the way through the 80s. Where would it be? Yeah, all the way through the, all the, way through the 80s. That, um, mm -hmm. Where it all started from. Man and her. Um, we've had other live acts as well, but it was going to be a big night if Hitman and her were in town. That was the, that was a fact. That was a fact. So, um, uh huh. We should, you should. Uh, Peter Waterman turned judge on Pop Idol. And I couldn't believe it when I actually seen him on there. And I, I know your face. I know you face somewhere. Well, that's how Pop Idol came around. Um, it would have been a lot better if Michaela Strachan was to be 
present now is the UI Reckons Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Um, they always seem to wear suits. I don't know why. But, um, Hi. That's where it all started from. Flex. I mean, all the youngies nowadays think that they haven't even been born. No wonder. Oh, but uh, you tried this. Well, how old are you? Chemical researchers. Yes, it is, Simon. Clear nail varnish. Um, I mean, let's say you could put as many coats as this stuff on as you want. It's not gonna. It won't hurt it. But even something this simple, that didn't take long. Um, tie. So that, there's the cone shape that I've brought back to basically have it underneath, well, on top of this. So it's looking a bit like, like that. So this is on a bigger hook. But I mean, I could trim, I could trim the top bit back, but I actually think that looks pretty nice the way it sits. I mean, guaranteed if you were to take that, um, that to the sea, you'd probably catch a fish. And so it doesn't take long to do um, salt water flies. And if they get broken, you can just retie them. I mean, that's that's the best thing about these. Um, but yeah. Hitman and her. Wow. Um, I mean, what else? Flex, flex. It's actually just on the corner for where I stay. That's where my very first school, this school was. And the very first song that kind of got me into the the rock of things was, well, apart from listening to Led Zeppelin with your dad, you know what I mean? It's like Pink Floyd as well. So there must be something better out there than, than that lot. As a kid, you didn't know who or what music was. I mean, the very first band I ever listened to was the Eagles. That was through my uncle. And the second band I ever listened to was Status Quo. So it's like, well, what more do you want? And then, like I say, I moved around a lot. A mate of mine gave me a shot of a CD. And it was a Linkin Park Hybrid Theory. Never heard of the band before. And I was like, okay, let's give it a listen. Really good. And he says, well, if you like that, here's another CD for you. you and give me that in back. Okay, Metallica, Black Album. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's where my music's kind of stem from. And then... Um, Well, I can play Pink Floyd on the guitar, I can play Metallica on the guitar, I can play ACDC, The Eagles, Status Quo, um, other bits and pieces that I've picked up along the way. Uh, what else? No, I've got to admit Pink Floyd is, is up there. The Kinks, that was my uncle. Hendrix was from my uncle. Um, but, I mean, I found out about Motorhead. Um, I was like, this is good. I'm kinda, I, I've kind of put a foothold on what kind of music I like. But as I was saying, I was at a school disco, and Nickelback came on with their number one hit single, I think it was called, um, How You Remind Me. 
And I'm sitting there on the speaker that I could fit into me. I was just a kid, about age of, what, nine or ten. Full disco, didn't matter to me. And, uh, the whole, the whole, the whole disco just died. It was like, everybody just stopped and I'm listening. I'm just like lying on the speaker, listening to Nickelback, How You Remind Me. And then I had my eyes closed and I was just like listening to this rhythm coming from the speakers. I didn't mind about the, I don't listen to lyrics. It was the complete rhythm. I was like, this is good. And, uh, I could open my eyes and people were looking at me like, are you okay? And I went, that's probably the best song that's ever happened here tonight, and that. Oh, but I was like, well, it doesn't matter to me, it's just music being music. But nowadays, since listening to Linkin Park and what's happened to Chester Bennington, the lead singer, um, it was like all his songs, he was trying to tell a story for himself. It was like he was trying to scream for help, and nobody would listen. It was, that was, like, to me, pretty hard to take. Still is. Um, I mean, Linkin Park have done a lot of songs. I mean, if I mention a few films, um, well, you've got Transformers, for one. Um, the first two films, I think it was from the Transformers, Linkin Park did the soundtrack for that. Um, and the second, well, basically the second film, that was... Uh, um, New, uh, New Divide. That was, that was the song for... Um, Transformers. That was a second film. Um, I mean, I, I keep I can make a, a whole a whole list of probably the the best drummer of all time, but it still is to this day. John Bonham. Then you've got uh, Neil Peart from Rush. So there's another band. Um, You look around thinking, well, who's left? I mean, I, I know personally what was going to happen. Um, as soon as the population of the world de depopulates even further than it already is. Um, Keith Richards and uh, Willie Nelson are going to have an absolute field day. <laughs> We're just making more room for them. I mean, that's, that's the standing joke. I mean, how they're still going is beyond me. How Keith Richards is still going. They're putting his body through a torture chamber of drugs, drink. I mean, the smoking he does, it's, I mean, it's unreal. I mean, how, how are they boys still here? Again. So it's, it's, it's all good talking about things. But um, I'm 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 a bit like a, a an egg, guys. Right, the heavy metal part of me is what you see on the outside. You think I'm one big angry bear that's got a banging sore head every day. I don't. I'm not. Um, crack open an egg. It's all gooey inside. I'm I'm like that. It's like the deep southern blues slide music comes out, and that stuff's just amazing. I mean, it's like um, going into an old junkyard and and, and like watching Americans, um, like smoky blues music. It's really, really. Like, it's like uh, that's like that's where I should belong. None, none of this. Like, I'm in your face type of thing. No. I'm I'm not that kind of thing. Um, but there is a couple of dance music I do like. There's a couple of dance songs. I mean, uh, Special D, Come With Me. Um, what else is on? Uh, DJ 
Luigi Diagostini. Um, Wendy's got a thing on her tablet. Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but it's on my YouTube as well. Um, then got Fragma. They they were about in the the nineties somewhere. Um, but yeah, I've got a, some range of dance music, but nothing to what kids would listen to now. I do not understand any of it. Rat packs, no. Eminem, I understand him. Um, but oh yeah, who me? A big softy. Oh thanks. <laughs> you have a darling. I am a big softy. <laughs> no, I'm not. No. I am not one of those, darling. Ah, what's the name of it? Uh, but, but listen, man. DJ Quicksilver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right, you can turn it off before YouTube de demonetize me even further than I already am because I'm talking about <laughs> music. I haven't even got to my thousand subjects, so would I be classified as demonetized? I don't know. Who, who's a big softy? Me. Oh, Simon. Um, what, what, what song was it? Was it Ace of Spades or was it the game from like Triple H's theme tune from WWE? I mean, that, that, all that music was just like wow. I, I love it all. I mean, you had uh, Dave Batista. Well, what was his name? Batista. His uh, theme song. Um, I will. I, I walk alone. Was from a band, uh, Saliva. Then you've got like bands of um, what do you call it? Um, Kill Switch Engage. Um, well, means the Walls of Jericho. I mean uh, Y Two J. Um, he actually basically did his own song because he's in the band Fozzy. He's the lead singer for that. So yeah, the multitude of things that you can listen to. Um, but nothing, nothing I don't think ever beats, beats any of that, what I've said. I mean, when I go out fishing, you you, you think of a tune, you think, oh, I could put this on a guitar. I mean, well, I, you mean, you guys watch local marks fishing. I mean, so do I. I mean, it's a pure genius act of what, what, what Will does. It To me, it's like, well, just throw a song together. I mean, just pick a thing out your... Um, ah, Simon. Now I got to, I got to, I heard Ace of Spades on it. There's got to be something else that oh that Motorhead have done. I mean, if I could have any band, if I could make a band up, right? To me, drums, John Bonham, bass guitar, Lemmy. Um, a rhythm guitarist, I'd have Glenn Frey from the Eagles. I'd have Hendrix as a lead guitarist. I mean, this is like vocals. I mean, oh man. I, I wouldn't know who vocals it would. I mean, this is just like a dream band for me, vocals. I wouldn't know. Dead or alive. I don't care, that's Bon Jovi song. Um, but yeah. I don't I wouldn't know who, who dead or alive or alive that, that would um that would cover that band. I think Hendrix himself would probably sing. Same same Glenn. Um Oh my goodness. Michael, really? A combine harvester? Oh man. Uh, the, I've got a brand new combine harvester. I'll give you the key. Is that how it goes? 
I, th- I think that's how I think that's how it goes. I'm not 110 percent sure, but yeah, um, nonsense song, fun at the time, still funny now. But it's like that other song that's like ooh ee ooh ooh ah ting tang wula bing bang. I just cannot be done with it. I mean, it's like anybody puts in the kind of things like that. So it's like, uh, uh, where's the nearest shotgun to me? Um, but then you look at the price of cartridges and you think, well. Too expensive. It's like what Clint Eastwood said. He says there's too many a holes, not enough bullets. And the price of ammunition nowadays. Well, do you want to go down that road? I certainly wouldn't want to go down the ammunition route. It's cost too much. In the nineties, when a lads hold in West Ward. Ah, but yeah. Anyway, since we've got a little all the multitude of what happens being in that kind of era. I mean there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with living in the past. But then sometimes in the past it kinda of has to stay there because Half the things that were done back then, you can't do now. I mean, my main argument is why not legalise cannabis? I mean, cannabis has been here since the dawn of creation, so I mean, why has it been banned? Why is it illegal? It should be legalised. And that would probably half more than the third of the population of crime. That's what people don't get. People do not understand that at all. Oh, it's it's a bad substance. It, it, it makes you do all sorts. And um, well, to me, no, it hasn't. I mean, to me, if I'm smoking, if I sit there and smoke a joint, I'm I'm relaxed. I'm listening to Pink Floyd and watching the Wall from the 1980s. Then it's like, and you try to tell me that oh, but paranoia? Nah, I have never been paranoid. I would, um, I would say that definitely the the way to go would should be legalized half the, more than half the jails in the UK would be free of trouble the court systems would be perishable because they're saying oh but it's it's a, it's a crime to smoke the stuff well prove it to me Proof. Give me, give me the proof of where it makes somebody f- be be stupid. Because to me, the proof's in the pudding. I've had, I've smoked it, and I've never done nothing stupid on the stuff. So, I mean, why, why we having, why have all that? I mean, maybe it's just me that the fact that I'm a thirty-one-year-old man, and I'm seeing. What the government should have done years ago and legalized it, legalized in the states. So why aren't they doing it here? Why is it the taxpayers got to pay all that money to keep somebody in jail when they could be out doing something constructive? So and smoke dope every day is not a good thing, but at least the police would know where they are. So th- what do you do? I mean, it's like, yo, your hands are tied. No, well, they're not. You just choose, they're they're choosing to just feed us what we want to be fed and not the research that we want to be taught. I had this argument in skills. I mean, I I asked a question not long ago. It says, um, what doesn't a kid get an education at school for? Um, Or to learn about a job? He said, no, 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 no. Why does a kid go to school? To be taught. And says, right. So what's the difference between your teaching and my teaching? I'm a parent. I should know how to teach my child how to behave and how to basically act in places. What do you do to your child? Nothing. I says, I bring, I bring a child, child up with discipline. What do you do? Put them in a naughty corner and think that's it. It's not how it works. 
Discipline on a child for being bad is one thing, but when you're trying to teach them at school your rights or wrongs to their rights and wrongs, that's how arguments start, and I don't like it. I hate teachers, because teachers don't listen, teachers don't understand. They all think that they know everything, and they know nothing. Well, it's just my opinion, darling. Yeah, what's this? No, Simon, you haven't. Trust me, no. No, no. No. Just... I've always believed that kids should be taught things like so fly fishing or something to keep them out of trouble, i.e. Well, nowadays, oh, this this new PlayStation game's coming out. Okay, well, what do you what do you want me to do about it? What do you want me to do about it? I need you to get it for me. Uh, well, it's, no, it's not how it works either. If you want something, go and earn it. I mean, that's how you get a paper job, paper boy job. I was in my twenties, and one guy that I've that I've known as a shopkeeper for quite a number of years now. I asked him. I says, "You need a uh, so you got an advert up for um for a paper boy." I was in my twenties, and I did it because none of the little delights that we have nowadays pick up on on themselves to go and get it. They didn't bother. So, why, why bother with something that, well, we're getting pocket money for it, but no, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, we've got our own opinions on things. Me, I'm just trying to be you doing this. But why, why, why go through the whole rigmarole? I mean, jail to me is only for people who are really bad, but never mind. Anyway. In the vice, we have just tied up a cormorant with a silver body. So yes, rants, I suppose. Who have I still got here, by the way, just in curiosity, so I'm trying to bring more viewers back after my off-the-script rant. Who's still here? Thank you for the five likes, by the way. Um, but yeah. You want know, about a fisherman moaning? It's fishermen always do is moan. Maybe you should call my YouTube channel the, Mo the Moaning Fisherman. I <laughs> wonder how many views you get. No, it's not funny either. Oh, Darren, thank you. You're a lifesaver. I think I've lost Michael Manning as well. Surprised the FBI and the CIA have not been in, haven't been in touch. I'm still here even though you ranted.
about teachers. No, 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 I didn't add about teachers. I didn't add about teachers. I didn't add about teachers. There's a difference between teaching and being taught. That's a fact. There's a big difference between teaching and being taught. That's okay, Michael. Uh, uh, Michael, darn fish and chips, jumbo fish sausage supper on a roll. I suppose that's the way you. If, uh, no, that would be the way. Yeah. So. There's a, there's a, to me, there is a difference. There's actually a woman I know, and she was telling us about what happened in school war. Our science teacher tried to teach science with people who didn't want to listen. I said, well, fine, I'll make you listen. I'll make you have a subject that you'd like. And what happened was they he brought a gun into school. It's armed at all. No, there's no ammunition, no nothing. But she's going to teach about ballistics. Everybody got their attention. That, that teacher got that kid's attention. Everybody's attention. Might be in an orthodox way of doing things, but he got it done. So Who knows? Maybe it was just something. Children are very sensitive in my eyes. You can't scream at them, you can't bawl at them, you can only empathise with them. Ask them what the real questions are. How are you? As soon as you get that teenager, you've won them over, hopefully. I mean, they might look at you thinking, well, how would you know? Well, wouldn't be asking otherwise. Age the day conquered to school long. Well, yeah. Going to school nowadays, man. Well, you say that schools are the safest place for kids. I'd argue that fact. I would argue that fact. The teacher's fault. The society looks at things. Mm, that's only my opinion. That's only my opinion. Anyway.
Ah, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Who won that conquest, by the way? How, I knew, I knew somehow that you'd go and smash your opponents one up. Um, see, I would have cheated at that. That's probably why conquers got banned when I was at school. I mean, we used the thing called Pogs. We had Pokemon. Oh man, Pokemon Pikachu. Um, what else above? Pogs, Pokemon. What else did we have in, in, in primary school? I tried Conkers once. I brought Conkers in and I said, um, I will let play them here. I went, uh, no. I went, why? It says, first of all, you cheat. I went, how? It says, did you soak them in vinegar? I went, no. And they were like, well, why is it so shiny? I went, I don't know. Um, yeah, I varnished it. <laughs> Varnished at the blazes. Put this thing through first, of course. And then I just put varnish on it. So, yeah. Big mistake. I, I don't cheat, by the way. I just use initiatives. Things that people don't look at. They got banned as, deemed as a dangerous weapon and hit someone in the head or in the eye. Right, question. 90s kids or 90s brain cells. Um, trying to flash back to this. What was that toy that had two things? You like, there was like two tricky things either side. And you just did that and you, you could like turn them around to all in one go or you could like tuck them. There was enough. Handle with year length. Um, like something like that. Handle about something like that, and then it had this circle thing going that way, and then this thing would just like funk them side to side. Apparently, they broke your wrists. Um, not very good, apparently. So, I've been told. Um, so I've been told. Do 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 do. What's happened here? Pushed something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what they were called, Darren. I don't get on my mind, but it's like you hold it in a handle and this thing would just cut side to side, so it was like one would go one way, another one would just jump up and down. Apparently they, they broke your wrist, like, and I was like, ooh, that sounds a bit nasty. My sister used to have one. I wasn't, I wasn't keen on the idea of having one. Oh, they were definitely a 90s toy. Maybe late 80s. Usually they have a clicking noise when you smash them both together. I can't remember what they were called. If you guys got me on the Facebook, I will try and send you a photo of what I'm meaning. And then you'll see what I'm... Then you'll be like, ah, oh, is that the thing? You'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, now I know what you're on about. The best I want to be the moments. It's going to be the moments. You used to sell it. Woolies used to sell them. When I say Woolies, I'm on about Woolworths. Woolies. Who else used to sell it? I think most of them had them for a while. I mean, I'm, as I'm saying, that's how far back I'm going. Yeah, and me, me, I'm about you, your ages. No, no, no. You're a teenager compared to me. I'm just a, I, I'm a prehistoric guy. I 
I've just been reincarnated into a young person. But I really, I honestly, I, I mention, you know, still by the receding hair and whatever else. Yeah. The hippie ponytail. I used to have games of not much long. Right. This scruffed a little bit. I can't really take you guys off of YouTube because then I'm not doing like restart a whole new thread. And like, I don't want that. Um, oh. Two ball things either side attached to. Two plastic things. We turned this thing around in a circle, but you had to have it on a handle. That's the handle. Oh. Darling, can I borrow your tablet, please? Hmm. Eh? Well, can you find that thing what I'm on about? Well, it's okay. Google will. Google knows everything. Hi, Beverly. Yeah, we're having a discussion about children's toys back from the 90s. Um, yeah. For life of me, I can't even remind her myself. Prehistoric dinosaur. Yeah. Rants and whatever else. No, I don't do rants. Nope. No point in ranting and raving about nothing. You just like to moan, that's all. I don't moan. What was that? Birdies are getting fed. We've got five. Well, we've had up to five um, wood pigeons. Land on the staircase that's at our back garden for our upstairs neighbour. And uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. They've all been named. So if you think of a Hoover name, it's probably been named it. Or even a brand of Hoover has been named it. Chile are fish and chips, or should I say, um, my. Jumbo fish sausage supper on a roll. That's how it goes. That's darn everybody. Um, hi GP. Anyway, yeah, back to flight time. Had had enough of the ranting and raving. Well, it's not even been ranting and raving. Just had a discussion. Why to have discussions? this? Chartreuse chenille. No, in fact, what I should do is make a pink one, not chartreuse. Pink. Pink and coral. Let's see what happens. Making blobs. I mean, if there was such a, a colour, if there was such a colour, I would have it. Pink and yellow blended together. Then I call it Mr. Blobby Blob. But we called it the Mr. Blobby. But unfortunately, I don't have any. But I've got pink, we've got yellow. But I can't combine the two of them together. I don't think. Or is there a way? Ah, so how's everybody? Uh, GP, I hope you're well. Beverly, I hope you're also well. Let's, let's try something. I've never done this before, so I mean, this is a, this is a first time for everything. Everybody should know who Mr. Blobby was. 
who's a very famous guy. Well, a very famous blobby. In yellow, my goodness, worked. <laughs> wow, that's worked. Anybody want to have Tutti Frutti? First thing to hold that must be absolutely crazy. Maybe going to, uh, what do you call it? Um, Narl's Bartley territory. Please hit that like button, folks. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, um, I was I was looking for um for uh, moderators and whatnot, so um I ended up going through my field of vision of oh, there's a there, there's a David Bowie song now. He's a guy for lyrics. When we're on about musicals, musicians, yeah, David Bowie, my goodness, how could I forget him? He did, he's done one of my all-time favourite songs, Heroes. And I'm, don't mean to sound a bit grim, but definitely the one for... Um, That was definitely going to be one for the uh, the church. That there is what you'd call a tutti frutti frutella. Tutti frutti frutella. I will give this a whistle of the weekend. I'm going to fish next weekend. That is definitely going to be. Mm -hmm. You guys see the different colours on there? Um, I'll try and put it to my black t-shirt so you can see it better. Pink and yellow together. Um, you see that? First time ever doing that, so... Hey, hey. Quite like that. Berlin. Look at this. What BB are you on about? Oh, that for BB, a BB blackboard. So 
So yes, we have um, we have pigeons in in the garden, and they're not called pigeons, even though that Chris Parker might call them pigeons. We know them as Hoovers. We've got Dyson Vax, uh, Henry Heta, uh, the Hetty, Hetty, Hetty New, a new new. New New the Hoover from Teletubbies. See, here we go, 90s kids back out again. Yeah, night. New New the Hoover. Hetty New New. Well, Hetty. Hetty and Henry. Vax, Dyson. Um, Dirt Devil. I don't know if there's any other kind of, a kind of Hoovers. Shark. Shark. Well, yeah, that's, that's a new brand. I'm talking about old brands. Um... Electrolux, yeah, there's them. Um, oh my goodness. GP, yes, definitely for trout. This is what you call. Well, I've just done this to see if it was any use, right? But that there, I'll bring it onto the camera to show you. That's a two tonal blob. So basically, you'd get pink and you some burst um, in the same fritz. Well, basically, two different kinds of fritz. I mean, that's the sunburst which I've got left of it. That's a sunburst color, and that's a pink. So that will do one more, one more of them. I mean, it's just, it's trial and error, really. I mean, this is the I mean, the best thing about fly tying is that if you if you if you think of something, you're lying sleeping in bed, thinking, you know, does that work? Does that actually go together? We well, don't really know until you try it. Here's Michael. I mean, I've been fly tying for years and years, but it's only since the last year or so. In fact, since probably 2018, I've really gotten into this. But actually, a lot better than I have with fishing. Um, fishing to me is like, well, you can call it what you want. I mean, fishing's fishing's fishing, but fishing's not fishing until you know what the trout are actually eating, or why did they feed on it. That's my that's my theory, and I'm going to stick to it. What makes a trout take a fly? What makes any fish take a bait? I mean, why, why, why do fish prefer sweet corn to a worm? You see where I'm going with this. I mean, why why do salmon eat prawns in the sea and not eat in fresh water? Why do salmon take a fly? Is that a sheer aggression? Are they curious? Um I mean there's a multitude of things. I mean, why all of a sudden will a carp take dog biscuits? A fish taking dog biscuits? Now, you'd think that a fish would take things that is in its own environment. But then, you... carp fishing to me, they've got a multitude of different names. Hi Wendy. Um, everybody, that's Mrs. Fish Whisperer.
Full of the body. No. It's like breathing out uh, uh, um, air here. So I'm trying to mix both colours together. It's still a bit inconsistent. Ah, right. Give this thing a go. I push this back a bit. One more. Rhubarbs and custards. Right. Can you guys see the different colours in this? I think that looks really smart. I'm going to sit on there while we'll finish. So if you want to know how they actually fish, you put them on a sinking line. Anywhere between a fast glass and a die three, and you strip it as far back towards yourself as you can possibly go. Because then it'll start taking a shape. So it's better when you've got water, but basically that just turns into like a streamlined version. So when that comes through the water column, so it starts off a surface first, and if you've got a single line on it, it just goes straight down. With, with the weight of the line, not with the weight of the fly itself. 
then when you're starting stripping it back, that's how it gathers its shape. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, so there's two. And I will give them a try next weekend. So. That's. Well, no, I've actually done that with Fritz before, but I'm quite liking that idea. Um, now. This is going to be stupid, but they do work, right? And they've been tried and tested, they do work. Have any of you guys seen a fly called a WhatsApp blob? The name suggests it in the title of what it's going to be. If you haven't, just, just say no, but I'm intrigued. Right. I'm going to still do this with orange because it seems to be better than this bob and hole than that green one anyway. So. Anyway. A cheesy treat. Well, no. No. But you're right, you're, you're right, you think you're on, the, you're on the right lines. We're not cheesy. But just think of what's it whatever you do don't laugh but this fly honestly fish on if you fish under a bung which is like a float um that there can be classified as a bung on a line um this gets fished underneath a float basically but we call them we call them a bung. There's your WhatsApp. So all you do is you grab all the one and just cut it. That's the tail for a what's it blob. So you're half right, Slenderman, but don't think of cheese. Think of the colour. Well, not colour. Even though you do get them in orange, really hot orange. But <coughs> that there is uh we call what's it? So what's a blob? So all you do is you just tie in tail first and then tie in the body I mean I've never actually seen the things being stripped back like what you'd do with a normal blob I don't know why that is I haven't even asked the question it hasn't even dawned on my mind to even ask the question but
That's it, basically. So what do you guys think about then? I mean, they are deadly in little stead, but still water uh, fisheries. Well, we'll, we'll do once I do we'll finish it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, no, don't unravel yourself. Hopefully that won't come off. It's going to be me using this one anyway, so. But yeah, that's. That there's a WhatsApp blob, so. The material that you've got, like, so here. They just look like many WhatsApps that you get in a crisp packet. Um. Um, have you guys got any ideas for me to tie um, a fly that you think that, I mean, it's up to you, I mean, I'm only asking for suggestions. But yeah, here is your, what's it, blob?
why I'm going to try and attempt to tie is called a Hutchins Pennell. It's basically a golden pheasant tippet for the tail, as you can see from your angle. for the body now to keep the body in check we have see you Simon oh yeah 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 definitely is. definitely 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 um, I wouldn't be doing this otherwise if, if, it, if it wasn't satisfying um oh is michael going away oh sorry michael sorry simon i thought i thought uh, tongue tied <laughs> i do apologize still there michael Give him a phone later on. So yeah, definitely satisfying for um for me catching fish. I've tied flies on by myself, but I'm gonna get a better buzz, an even bigger buzz. I've actually given flies that I've tied to people. Does matter who. Um, to anybody really, um, and I said, Peter, try this, and they've caught fish. Um, uncles, uncles had them, my mate has had them, my old man's had them. I actually tied them up with a couple of salmon flies, um, a couple of years ago, and I said to him, says, try this thing, and he says, what? Well, I just gave you a bunch of salmon flies, so try one of them. I ended up putting one on the hook, well, on the end of his line, should I say, and um, <laughs> the thing was skating across the top of the surface, and I was like, wow, because it made, all it was was made up of four hackles, all it was was four hackles. Where is it? Here, uh, here it is. And it was actually tied using this colour of orange as a hackle. Um, 
Mm. Oh, my. Need some wiki wiki juice. And then um, this one. Um, Simon, the easiest way to do it, right, is if, if it's only macro feathers, um, you 
get yourself a really strong thread. Right? Nothing too thick. I mean, my orange one's ideal. It's an AO uni thread. Right? You can near enough pick up a vice next to nothing. Um, and get yourself some decent hooks. That would, um, and then you'd be two ninety nine for this stuff. So a packet of hooks depends on what size that you're after. Um, you would probably need um, what would be the? I'd go with general size eight hook. That that would be. That that does everything I that as a bog standard hook would be. That's what I would go for. Um, yeah, definitely. That would that would be the hook that I would use. Size eight. Anything doesn't matter what it is. Um, But yep, that's what I would recommend. Um, I think. Um, eBay, eBay also do kits. Um, eBay, eBay. That's what you have. eBay, Amazon. Amazon. Uh, are, are, um, Simon, are you on uh, Facebook? I'm going to try and take a couple of tons of this off. Right, go on Marketplace. Um, type in flight tying kits to see if there's anything local around about where you are um ideally you can get a second hand one as long as you've got a vice um you can tie up macro feathers until um you're satisfied until you've got enough but um yeah this is like to me this is like a pastime type of thing but um It's actually not that bad. Right. Where do I put that? Ah, oh, keep. Um, you can eBay, Amazon, marketplaces on there. 
Facebook. Um, have you got any auctions where you are? You, you can also go to an auction and, and find out bits and pieces that are there as well. Um, they're worth a try. Um, what else is going to be? Yeah. Um, day, day three. Definitely day three. Thanks again, Stuart. It's been very interesting. Unfortunately, I have to go and get a barbecue for me. And what or I won't be eating tonight. See you later, Simon. Um, take care. But yeah, um, if possible, if I find you on Facebook, I'll, 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 um, I'll try and send you a link to a couple of bits. Well, I'm going to have to call it quits here, guys. This will be the last fly I die anyway, so. Right. See you all after. Bye-bye.